Hey, Use World, I am back with another video. Today, I wanna to cover five more reasons why I let over 15 bags go. If you haven't checked out my part one, I'll link that down in the show notes for you below. Let's just jump right into it. Four bags in front of me haven't been in any of the videos recently, so I figure it's time for them to come out to breathe and make an appearance for us to take a look at. Reason number one is when bags are too heavy. Before, I would make purchases based on, you know, how they look, how they function, but I didn't really think about, you know, the weight of the bag. As I'm getting older, you know, my shoulders start to hurt and I love crossbody um, or even top handle, right? Just using it on your crook of the arm where when you start throwing stuff in there, it can get really heavy. Obviously, when you're young, you're very able to bounce back. You don't feel the pain. But again, as I'm getting older, I want to make sure bags are under two pounds because of all the stuff that I put in there, it's obviously going to be more than two pounds if it's at the two pound mark. So I don't carry a lot of stuff. I've learned to really pare down to just the essentials. These are the bags I let go even with my very pared down, you see my cosmetic bag, you see my little key pouch or a small wallet or card holder, and then maybe two phones, which in itself is like the most heavy thing. They're literally the bane of my existence. <laughs> so, you know, I have to factor that in just because I do have a job that requires me to have two phones, right? My personal and a work phone. And that just got to be too much. So I have a very strict rule. And no, I do not go around with a scale in my purse as I'm going shopping. Usually, I really do appreciate if websites, I do a lot of online shopping. I don't really do in-person shopping. And even if I do go check out purses in person, I do do some research online via YouTube and their website to see if they post, you know, the weight of the bag. But I know some people out there carry around a tape measure, you know, if you're furniture shopping. I used to do that when I was trying to furnish my house, but I'm not going to carry a weigh scale. That's just kind of ridiculous. But the main ones that I'm thinking about that are too heavy that I let go are mulberry bags. I love mulberry bags. They're gorgeous. Their style is very, you know, classic looking, very me. Unfortunately, I had to let all of them go because they were way too heavy. And... Maybe it's to their own detriment that they use really good quality leather and thus it becomes really thick and heavy. So the first one I let go is the Winsley bag. This is one I bought when I was in Ireland and I showed up to their outlets and I saw this bag. Of course, you get the tax free and whatever. Did I get tax free? I can't remember, but I think it ended up being like seven or eight hundred dollars which is a really good deal but the chain was heavy the bag itself was heavy the interior was suede and it's just an overall a really gorgeous bag and very low key it had a really nice dark green color but it was just way too heavy even though i had just you know one or a couple things my essentials that are in there so i had to let that go i basically only used it maybe once at the maximum twice to dinner. And I was just like, okay, I, I can't do this. Um, the second one is going to be the Bayswater, another gorgeous bag. Um, it was very useful. I did take it on vacation with me and it turned out to be quite heavy. The strap is long and it's not adjustable. So you've got a little bit of a, another kind of a loaf looking like bag that's kind of flinging around on your body when you're cross it. And of course, it just got to be too heavy, so I had to let that go. The other one, oh my goodness, this one, the Amberly, such a cute bag. It didn't fit very much, but the thing itself was so incredibly heavy that I had to let that go. Um, the strap was heavy. I, I, I was feeling the construction of it. It was just so structured and such a well-made bag that I think you can literally toss around everywhere and it still will be a real in really good condition. But unfortunately, it was just, I think, I didn't, even, I didn't weigh any of these bags, but if I'm using it and it feels really heavy, then I'm just like, nope, not doing it. The other one is going to be my Marc Jacobs bag. If you remember, this was all the rage. I know they recently did a reissue of it. I had the purple one, 
And of course, it was a bottomless pit, even though the interior lining had, you know, the Marc Jacobs symbols or logos, which was kind of cool. Um, so that one was really heavy as well. So I did let that go. And I'm, I'm kind of more into, into neutral colors now, as opposed to just some bright, super bright, you know, purple uh, anymore. The last one that I had to let go that comes to mind that was incredibly heavy was a Tumi bag. And I got this for a work bag. Um, functional bag, you put your laptop in there, you put all your essentials when you travel for work and then it's game over. It's just like, oh, you know, seven to eight pounds and I'm not lugging that around on my shoulder. Even when I use the top handle for the crook of my arm, I had to let that go. Reason number two, I'm gonna kind of put a slash in the middle where it's too delicate slash not functional. I had to let the Hermes Garden Party 36 go. Um, just because the top handle was too small, like this part, you see how there's a loop right here and it's very spacious and I can reach my hand into it. My biggest complaint about all of the garden parties is that the top handle is like half the size of this, right? So I feel like maybe, again, it's probably a me issue, right? I've got a big you know, hand and then my wrist is pretty big, my arm's pretty thick. So it was hard for me to like put my hand through the top handle and it ended up being just on my wrist. And to me, that is really inconvenient because it just hangs out here. I can't go all the way here. And then for me, I have to play target practice every time I like put my hand through it just to grab the bag. Otherwise, I'm limited to just using it with, on my hand and, you know, carrying it around that way. So that's kind of like not functional at all. The other one that I had to let go was the Celine Trio. Uh, I think it's called a Cabas. It's uh, I'll insert photos here. But that one was very delicate in my opinion. And I've seen a lot of pre-loved ones that I, it was just shredded, right? You put stuff in it, everything start poking out. You can see the, 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 the shape of whatever you put in there. So I ended up just using the middle section, the middle zipper and putting stuff there, which I found that to be very limiting, right? And then of course, if you put stuff on the back pocket, it starts poking at you. The leather was very soft and very malleable, which I totally appreciate. But to me, I don't want my bag to look like I have a phone sticking out or I have, you know, the, the zipper or something that's not positioned correctly on the card holder that's just sticking out and then thus ruining the leather of the bag. So I decided to let that go. I got that brand new and my friend, you know, actually got it for me for like three or $400 when she was working at Barney's. So I was really happy to have a Celine kind of crossbody that seemed really functional, but it ended up not being functional at all. The other Celine I had to let go was the Celine Trotour in the small size. It was black and gold, perfect combination. I had to let that go because it literally fit nothing, right? So it's, you know, it's flat at the top and then it's a circular shape at the bottom. I could barely fit one phone in let alone, you know, having my card holder and then maybe just the lippy, right? Another complaint about that is it is only used as a shoulder strap. Even for me, it is adjustable, but even for me, I'm 5'8", it was still considered really short sh shoulder strap that they provided. So I wish it was longer so that you can cross body it, body it or use it as a shoulder, uh, shoulder bag but it just didn't work out because it just kept slipping off. It's not long enough. It sat really weird on my body. So I had to let that go. Reason number three, and maybe this is just the me problem, but I just got bored. I got bored of these bags. The Burberry Nikki tote. I've talked about this bag before. Such a gorgeous tote, very flashy, very summery. Every girl wanted that bag as I'm walking down the street, but I used it so much that I decided to let it go. The top handle that was really short, so again, the functionality bleeds into like the first, uh, second reason, right? Where it, you can't really shoulder bag it, it's really a crook of your arm kind of tote bag. It was also completely open, there was no zipper, it was just a little hook, so things fall out sometimes, even though that's not a huge problem most of the time, but just be aware when you do use an open tote. The Valentino Rock Stud. I maybe have only used this like bag like maybe once or twice. 
It's a very cute bag, but again, the rock stud, I feel like, is making a comeback. But at that point when I still had that bag, it was fading away. And it was in a pink that I wasn't a big fan of. I did get that bag on a really good deal from the Guilt Warehouse you know, frenzy. I've talked about this before where you go in and you grab um, all of these designer purses at like, you know, 60, 70, 80% off. So I think I got that for maybe five or six hundred dollars. Um, the strap was really long, so it, it was adjustable, but it didn't go with a lot of, you know, clothing I was wearing. So I was just, yeah, I used them maybe once or twice and I, I let that one go as well. The Burberry Canterbury. Just not a big fan of Burberry right now. The checker tote um, on the side, and then it was leather. The leather was okay, right? I had higher expectations for blur Blurberry. <laughs> Burberry, but the leather had weird stains on it, and I don't think I spilled anything on it. Um, and because it was black on the front side of it, so it was, I was trying to like rub it off and none of it would come off. So it looked a really, a little bit faded. And I did use that bag a lot. So maybe that's why it was just normal wear and tear on the leather. I'm not sure. And this one's actually made in England as opposed to Turkey. I think a lot of bags, um, from Burberry are now made in Turkey. Correct me if I'm wrong. So that one's actually made in England and I also got that at the Guilt Warehouse for like five or six hundred dollars. See that's the thing, my collection back then wasn't very big so when I use a bag or get a new bag I use it every day all week and there's not too much rotation so for me maybe it's just my personality I don't know. Um, I get bored of bags really quickly. So something to think about, you know, it's kind of like a pair of shoes, right? The wear and tear is, um, you know, more hard on the bag if you use it every day or wear every day. It's good to let your bags breathe. It's good to let your uh, shoes take a break and switch out to a different pair before going back to it, right? So maybe that's just my personality. I don't know. I just need to have a variety so that I don't get bored of that particular bag very quickly. The last bag in this I got bored category is going to be the Fendi Mama Baguette. And this is a pink one, a very soft pink. It was cute, incredibly lightweight. I used it a couple times um, and I was just like, okay, I'm done with it. So I you know, decided to let that one go. And I did purchase that from um, the Japanese vintage retail market. So it was a really good deal. I think I got it for like $400. So it was a, it was a good couple times bag and I don't think I lost any money on it. So taking a break here, if you aren't subscribed just yet and you're watching before July 3rd of 2023, do consider subscribing and check out my summer bag videos as I am doing a giveaway in celebration of hitting 500 subscribers. I'll link that for you down below as well. Back to it. Reason number four are camera bags. You guys are gonna come for me. I know the love for camera bags are strong, is really strong. So I completely understand the appeal of it. And I used to love it a lot. I wanted a camera bag, you know, in every brand, but I no longer own them. I had the Gucci Marmont um, red small camera bag. That was really cute. I enjoy using it. I also had a YSL Mini Lou camera. I probably have like a bunch more others. I just can't remember. But camera bags, in my opinion, does not work for me. Just because uh, you have to make sure you zip it up, right? First world problem, I totally get it. But when it comes to you forgetting to zip up and then you bend over or you, mo you move in a kind of odd like direction, mostly it's bending over. And then all of a sudden, it flips over and everything gets scattered on the floor. Maybe I'm just a clumsy you know, person, but for me, it has happened multiple times where I just you know, try to zip, I forget to zip it, and then so I bump into something, it flips over, and then it just scatters everything. So I don't know, I just don't prefer camera bags anymore. It's a square shape, a rectangular shape, uh, very useful, but it's not something I gravitate towards anymore. The last category is going to be Kate Spade and Coach as well as Tory Burch or any outlet that, you know, any brand that has an outlet. I had so many of them. I'll insert a couple photos. Kate Spade, I feel like, has really whimsical 
categories for their bags and it's super cute obviously that's not my style anymore i don't want to be cute uh, i also feel like you if you wear that you know banana or pineapple or you know a little parrot which again like i said it's super cute kind of bag um, or has little cherries on top of it you've seen it once you've seen it like you can't unsee it right it's like you're wearing it gets old super quickly right it, it's not something that is classic and can go with any outfit it has to be very specific and you know kate spade as well as coach their bags aren't expensive right but for you to be spending 80, 150, 200 dollars on something that you have to pair with a specific outfit, to me, you're buying those bags, you're buying those bags, and then it's just it adds up, right? And if you can you wear it year after year, you know, this theme of bananas. And usually Kate Spade has really, you know, on trend themes where, you know, hey, the hottest new thing is um dolphins or you know parrots and banana or monkeys or whatever it is right it's on trend with that specific year do i want to be pouring money you know even though it's not you know a lot of money for each bag but if you buy one theme bag that you use one year and then you try to resell it it's not easy to resell so do I want to be spending one, two, three, three hundred, four hundred dollars every year just to have a longevity or a lifespan for that particular bag for only one year? Do you see what I'm saying? Or am I being crazy? And then same thing with like coach bags. I don't I don't like the coach monogram. I like monogram like Louis Vuittons. I like, you know, um, other brands monograms like the little Gucci ones those are completely fine but when it comes to coach monograms I guess I just went through the whole phase of you know back in the day where every single girl out there uh, had a coach bag right it just got so old right and they're bringing it back and it, there's no like update to it so I'm just like eh, I'm over it right when it comes to the regular coach um, store their designs are actually really nice. I do enjoy the regular coach, but when it comes to coach Alid, I feel like when I walk in there, everything is plastered with like the coach monogram. You can say things, same as the same thing about Louis Vuitton. <laughs> I get it. It's like, am I being a hypocrite? Maybe, but I feel like the Louis Vuitton is just on a different level and it's very consistent. And then of course, if you want to choose like the, the Louis Vuitton emprunt, and they also switch it up to a little small or a big. Um, it just has a different, it's just a different tier of luxury, right? So going back to spending the same amount of money, I had a couple coach outlet bags and they don't last. I feel like, well, one of them, my dog chewed. So that's no fault of coach, <laughs> obviously. Um, but I feel like the, the, especially the cloth ones, they wear and tear very quickly and you're spending like $150 on a coach bag that doesn't, the quality of the outlet, I feel like is not as good obviously as the regular outlet. And they have materials, most of them is canvas and plastic, not a whole lot of leather. So it doesn't last as long, the longevity. So in this case, kind of just showcasing, I was able to get this Ferragamo. This is a bag from like 19, the, the mid 1990s. It's a leather bag and I got this for like $300. Do I want to spend $300 on a pre-loved vintage bag or do I want to spend it on, you know, three or four coach bags that might not last as long, right? This is all personal preference. I'm kind of just rambling here, um, but personal choice. I want to buy a piece that is a quality piece. You know, obviously if it lasts for 19, from the mid 1990s, you know that this bag is going to last as opposed to a coach where it's very trendy or Kate Spade where it's very trendy. And this one just looks like it's pr pretty much completely brand new. And I know this is a very, a very classic style that I can wear, you know, decades from now. And the final category, which is a bonus category, I let go of this particular Fendi because it was just so smelly. Again, that's obviously not a reason why you should purchase or not purchase a bag. This is something you have to be aware if you do purchase from the Japanese or just pre-loved in general. It's a risk to purchase pre-loved, right? 
The smell is not something you can see online when you're purchasing from, you know, a pre-owned store. If you show up in person, yeah, obviously you can find that out, right? But that bag was so smelly. I put it into a plastic bag with a bunch of charcoal filters. I, th I threw dryer sheets in there. I tried everything and it was just so smelly that I had to let it go. So I thought that was kind of funny. So I hope this was helpful as you are in search of your next bag and considering multiple factors of each bag. Hit that like and subscribe button for me. Check out my top five reasons why I let 20 bags go here and whatever the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll like next. Life is hard. I want to help you save time and money so that you can somehow adult easier and less in retail. I'll see you next time.